today. Michigan State 34-17 over Michigan. Congrats as a former Sparty. Uh, how do you break this one down? I mean, MSU's balance seemed to, you know, and they, and they kept Robinson in check. Yeah, I think, first of all, when you look at this game, Denard Robinson just did not play very good football. And for a team that depends primarily on Denard Robinson, you can't have those type of mistakes that he made, especially in the red zone. But overall, we said it uh, earlier before we got to this weekend talking about Michigan State. Michigan State, solid offensively, solid defensively, good solid special teams with Martin. And at the end of the day, when you look at this football game, I think Michigan is very lopsided at this particular point with one offensive threat. And if he stubs his toe, you see what happens, or maybe blows a tennis shoe or a shoelace. That's what happens to the University of Michigan. Now, they have some, they got a tough road. They got some games they got to play coming up that certainly they have the ability to win those football games if they're able to spread out and let Denard Robinson do his thing. But Michigan Michigan State went into a hostile environment three in a row. I give Coach D'Antonio, his mm -hmm. staff, uh, especially Treadwell, who I get a little bit frustrated with sometimes with that balance because I do think they, they're able to spread it out even with those backs and create even more headaches. But they get the job done. They did an extremely good job, and it was a very convincing win. Again, down in Ann Arbor, not an easy place to win uh, for the Michigan State Spartans. State now up to 13 in the AP poll, 6-0. and They've got Illinois at home next weekend before going to Northwestern. So, you know, provided they can keep the focus, good chance they could be 8-0 before playing out at Iowa here at the end of the month. Well, I'm going to take it just like Mark D'Antonio would. Whoa, we, whoa. <laughs> Illinois went into Happy Valley and made it not so happy. So, I got news for you. Coming into Spartan Stadium, Illinois is going to be ready to play football. A couple years ago, a little piece in history, a few years back, if you go back, I believe it was a homecoming game as well. Illinois came in and won that football game. So Michigan State, look, Michigan State, great football game, great win. But look, here's the greatest thing about college football in a winning program. When you start to win, the pressure goes up because you can't have a, a letdown. You can't let yourself have the, the guard get undone. Illinois is coming in to try to whoop your tail. you got to show up and play football. And I think Mark D'Antonio is going to be singing that song all week long. He'll be doing it the next week. They're not looking past anybody. Michigan State's a very good football team, but they're not good enough to look past anybody in the Big Ten at this point. Should be fun, Ty. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks. Well, with Lowell leading East Grand Rapids 34-17 on Friday night, the Pioneers erupted for three fourth quarter touchdowns and a stunning 44-40 victory. So, which team do you suppose is the new number one in Jane Boss's top ten? Sports Overtime, talking high school football in just 90 seconds. Back here on Sports Overtime, as always on Sunday nights, joined by Jane Boss of the Grand Rapids Press, talking a little high school football. And what game do you suppose we're going to start talking about tonight Let from this past think. weekend? Hmm. Yeah, 44-40 uh, to 40 East Grand Rapids over Lowell. We talked about this game, uh, kind of previewing it last week, and I think both of us were probably in the frame of mind of Picking the Red Arrows only because they had given up only two touchdowns in the six games up till that point. Um, you know, not that you ever want to count out a four-time defending state champion and a team that had won, what, 24, 25 <laughs> games in a row coming in. But, you know, the way things were looking and the way that Lowell was beating people and the way East Grand Rapids, I wouldn't say struggled, but the way they weren't really dominating in a couple of games leading up to it, you know, a lot of people thinking, hey, this is going to be Lowell's night for the taking, especially being at home. Pioneers prove us all wrong. They looked great. East Grand Rapids played so well. They did not have as many yards as Lowell did. You know, they didn't dominate the line at all. I mean, Lowell really seriously dominated both sides of the ball. But East Grand Rapids made the plays when they had to. They made the big play when they had to. And they did everything they could. I and mean, they came back from three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. It was truly amazing. What was it 34-17 at what point? You're there. You're watching that game. What did you see? I mean, and did you see anything along up until that point that would make you sit back and say, hmm, we're about to see a comeback here? Well, only because I talked to people before the game of East Grand Rapids people, and they all felt really good about themselves. They thought that they really had a great chance, and they gave me so many reasons why, and so I didn't really doubt them. But when it's they're down by that much, entering the fourth quarter, no way. No one comes back from that, not against Lowell. And so many times in the past we've seen, regardless of who wins this game, you know, Lowell's going to be in Division Two, vying for a state title, East in Division Three, vying for a state title. You know, they, they've got bigger, you know, bigger paths to go here in the next couple weeks as we head towards Thanksgiving weekend. But just what a great spectacle, year in, year out. I mean, this is the rivalry in the area. Area. It's just amazing. It's, it, you have to be there really to feel it. It's just it's so different than other games you've ever been to. It's got a different atmosphere. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at your top ten. So la last week, uh, you know, we had Lowell taking over the number one spot, but of course now this week we have to flip flop that back. So East Grand Rapids back where they were the first uh, five weeks of the season, uh, back at number one. Lowell only dropping that one spot to number two. Zealand East seven and zero. Oh, what a story they have been this season. Thirty four fourteen winners this weekend over Unity Christian. Rockford uh, pounds East Kentwood. They remain at number four. West 
Ottawa holding down the five spot after knocking off Hudsonville 38 to 20. Grand Haven still number six, 38 15 winners over Granville. Catholic Central moving up a spot, uh, knocking off Caledonia. That's a game I was at, 38 21. Uh, Middleville entering the poll after knocking off Forest Hills Eastern. Greenville uh, knocking off Preston 41 to 8. Zealand West 56 uh, 7 winners over Rogers. So, you know, we've been talking about the Lowell's and the East and those schools. Uh, you know, I, I know we got a, we got a Zealand East, unbelievable. 7 0. This is the program that, you know, has struggled mightily the last few years. Years, I guess, leading up to last year when maybe when the, they kind of turned the corner. I think it's going to be interesting when it comes to playoff time. If they're in Division Three, they're going to play Grand Rapids Christian. They're going to play East Grand Rapids. I mean, I'd love to see them match up against those teams. You never get those kind of matchups, and I'd really look forward to that. Another surprise out there, Forest Hill Central leading the OK Black right now, undefeated in the conference, 5-1. Uh, and one. It's been a while since the Rangers were, were on the map. Oh, I'm happy for Forest Hill Central. It's a great place for them to be. I'm excited. But, you know, it is the OK Black. The, comp the competition's not quite as tough as other conferences, but still they're winning the conference, and that says a lot. Yeah, Kenwell Hills uh, seems to be down a little bit after winning that the last couple of years. And the OK Red, you know, we talk about it every <laughs> year. It's like, it's like the gauntlet, week in, week out. So you still have those four teams right now, uh, Rockford, Muskegon, West Ottawa, uh, Grand Haven all sitting there at 4-1. One. Well, two of them play Friday night. You know, okay. West Side was going to Muskegon. I would love to see that game. Both teams are so fast. They come off the ball so fast. Their defenses are fast. They both have great quarterbacks. I think it's going to be an exciting game. Is that the one you're going to be at, or do you well, know yet? No, because we're our sister paper's Muskegon Chronicle, okay. and so they're going to cover that game for us. So I'm going to go to Catholic Central Forest Hills Eastern. I want to see some okay gold action. That, that should be good. CC looked pretty impressive the other night against Caledonia. Jane, thank you. See you next week. All right.